This is our AGM. The AGM is quite short. The meat of the meeting is the lightning talks, and uh, we'll get to those uh, very shortly. Um, so, in our agenda is welcome introductions. I've just done that. Apologies for absence. Um, we have an apology from Mary Bennett, who is uh, in bed with flu and can't join us. Um, and then the next item of the agenda is the minutes of the 2020 AGM and in the way of the open source specialist group, those are a YouTube video. You can go and watch the um, video on YouTube. Um, uh, can I ask um, for, um, I've forgotten to put a slide to do a vote on this. Can I therefore ask if anyone um, uh, uh, um, has any opposition to approving the minutes? No? And Andy here is going to take some notes and record what our decision was, because um, I probably have to write it down somewhere, but it will be up. It's being recorded, so it will be a video. Uh, so, for the next item is the uh, chair's report. That's me. Um, for those who don't know, I'm standing down as chair this year, so this is my fourth and final uh, chair's report. And I think I keep this very short. There are three things that I think define us. First of all, we've got something around 1,600 members, and that makes us by far the UK's, large, the UK's largest professional group of open source engineers. There's no other group of professional open source engineers that approaches the science. There are lots of other open source groups in the UK, but not one dedicated to the professional engineer as an individual. Secondly, we look in our database and see what people's jobs title. And the commonest job title amongst the open source specialist group is director. We're a group full of entrepreneurs um, uh, running small businesses as well. And the last thing is the second most common job title is senior software engineer. We are a group of people in senior roles. We have a leadership role. Within the industry. And those three things, those haven't changed for a long time, they define who we are. So, and leaving aside the fact that I obviously edited last year's slides and I forgot to edit the title, this is for 2020 2021. Um, if we look in four areas that we deal with, in terms of our remit as part of the BCS for education and training, the big part of that is our 12 monthly, our monthly meetings. And we now have a meeting every single month. So we now have 12 monthly meetings. That's three more than last year because we also lost the meeting because of lockdown happened. Um, we've actually managed to run a workshop. Philip Cronin has run a half day workshop on programming in Rust for us uh, last December. We haven't had our conference. Our Wash Camp is again been cancelled this year, but we hope that will come back in future years. And one thing we've done is aligning with our remit as advocates for open source, we've switched from open source platform for um, our video conferencing. And that's Big Blue Button, that's what we're using now, and it's proved very useful. And thank you to uh, uh, Julian's employers in Germany who provide us with this service free. Um, and so uh, that's a bit, and Julian will talk a bit more later on about the future and um, and more open source creeping into what the BCS does. The big part, the big thing I've tried to drive during my four years is to pick up the advocacy role. We've become very comfortable with running monthly meetings and we're quite inward looking. Um, and what I was very keen is that we should be the go-to organisation. If you want expertise on open source in the UK, we are founded under Royal Charter as the BCS to be the professional body for computing in the UK. And that includes advocating for what we do. We've had five blog posts this year. We're increasingly asking speakers to write guest blog posts. That is slightly down from last year, but I think these things go up and down. Most importantly, Two years ago, we had a dedicated outreach officer. This year, it's become a dedicated outreach committee, and it meets each month. We had a meeting about an hour and a half ago. It meets 
on the same afternoon as our monthly meetings. Julian Kunkel chairs it, and um, Mary Bennett is a member of that committee. I attend as, as chair as well. So we have a committee to try and drive this forward, and Julian will say more about his vision for that going forward. Outreach. How do we go to the outside world? And this ties into the advocacy world. So we've had one joint meeting with other BCS groups. Of course, lots of other BCS groups attend our meetings. Um, um, but we do actually sometimes present at other meetings, less so this last year because of lockdown. It's not worked quite the same way. All our meetings are live streamed, so we get participants from around the world. Um, what we found was when we first started live streaming, we had very big attendances. But one of the other things we do is we record all our talks and get them up onto YouTube very fast. We've now got a total of 106 videos. And I think what we've seen is people recognizing that unless you want to be actively involved in the discussion with speakers, you can catch up on our talks afterwards and you don't have to attend at the time of the meeting. So we actually have seen an increase in viewing of videos. At the same time, we've seen a drop off in the number of people attending the live streams. And increasingly, these meetings, I see them as a vehicle for those particularly interested in the subject to join and to create a set of videos that people will then pick up at their leisure. And the statistics, which Julian will go into a bit more later, seem to bear that out. And then finally, in terms of the wider community. We've actually, even before I was born, we were an outreach organisation. These meetings are held jointly with the UK Open Source Hardware User Group, and I can see we have OSHAD members here as we do at every meeting. And a lot of our meetings focus on that new, the open source hardware aspect, and indeed my talk will be an open source hardware talk, not an open source software talk. We set up two years ago, we started working with the um, Risk 5 International, and we are the hosts of the London Risk 5 Meetup. And there were Risk 5 Meetups in Bristol and Cambridge. In fact, now there is only the London Risk 5. So we are sort of the UK Risk 5 Meetup. And those take place once a quarter. And we have speakers from all around the world. Uh, we had speakers from Germany. We had speakers from Sweden. We had speakers from the UK on Monday this week. And we started to report. We've had our first joint meeting with Russ London, okay? And that, we hope, we'll be able to host meetings with Russ London on a regular basis, okay? Our sibling organization is Open UK. If we represent the individual professional engineer, Open UK represents the interest of business, open source business in the UK. And during my time, it's been my privilege that Amanda Brock has taken over chief executive and many of you will know Amanda Brock and will appreciate the energy she brings to anything she's involved with. And consequently, Open UK has gone off like a rocket. And that's actually fabulous to see them as a sibling organization worldwide. And lastly, I want us to represent it. And the, as some of you know, it was recently published the EU for the last 18 months, working with Open Forum of Europe and Fraunhofer II um, in Germany have those two organizations have been creating a big study on the importance of open source hardware and open source software to the UK, to the European economy. And to do that, they drew in a body of experts, and I was one of those experts. That report was published. We always knew open source was bigger than people realized. It's, they reckon it's worth between 65 and 95 billion euros each year. It's a big industry, and that will drive European Union investment in open source. That doesn't exclude the UK, because even though the UK has left the European Union, we have been this year signed up as a member of Horizon 2020, and that means on the research level we can join. So that is my review for 2020 And... Uh, bye. My plan, the plans for next year, that should be 2021 22. See Julian's talk later because I'm not going to be chair next year. And hopefully, depending on the vote, Julian will be. And so, lastly, as I stand down as chair, I'd like to thank 
loads of people have helped me as chair, but I want to pull out one or two of them. First of all, I, I'm, very, I'm very supportive by having a very dynamic committee, and actually, the age profile of our committee is one of the most youthful in the UK. Um, so uh, that's been very helpful that individual members of the committees organised the week meetings. It's not just a tiny group. Or, and uh, so that's been fabulous. Kerry Weir at BCS HQ has been a huge help, and I know she will be a huge help to Julian in just getting things organised. There's a lot of effort going on behind the scenes to make all the technology come together. And lastly, a call out to Sarah Cook, who works for me at Embercosm, and you will see her at all these meetings, and she's the one running around making sure that talks pop up and everything else. So a big thank you to Sarah, everything. And then separate that, I'd like to thank Seven Janian, specifically on the committee, because Seven's been on the committee for many years. He comes from the open hardware background. That's where we first met. Um, he's a big net BSD guy. He has a demanding business of his own. He's all, every year, he organizes one or two talks for us. They're always great evenings. And so I'd like to say a particular thank you to Seven, who's standing there this year for all of his work. So that's my that's my um, talk. And at this stage, I'd like to hand over to Richard Miller uh, to present the uh, um, accounts. Uh, Richard, over to you. Uh, can somebody get my slides up, please? Sarah, are you doing it? If they don't appear, I may just have to do it verbally. Uh, Richard, did you send the directive to Sarah? Because I didn't send them to Sarah. Uh, uh, no, I didn't. Uh, that's probably why Sarah can't find them. Um, Can you want to share your screen, Richard, directly? You share your screen, Richard. Just hang on. It's on the bottom, the fourth button in the center. I have a nasty suspicion I said to Richard on seven slides to Sarah. Could we possibly go on with the election of officers and I'll get the slides ready and uh, speak later? Uh, absolutely, we'll take it out of order, okay? Um, uh, can someone make me speak? I don't think I'm... BCS Thank you. Good. So, um, uh, the first uh, thing that I will do is um, I will run the um, poll for election of chair. And oh, how do I start a poll? I've forgotten.
Oh, soft coal is a problem now. Soft coal, response types A, B, C, D. Response choices A, B, C. Is it working? The poll? Yeah, yeah, I'm on the side. Okay. Um, right. Okay. Everyone should have a chance to vote. Yeah. Do you remember the details? I don't know. Do you remember the details? I'm not. So you can have your vote. Yeah. Are you, are you voting there or are you going to vote? Well, I, I'm not sure. How do I vote? I've, I've started the poll, so I can't vote myself. I'll add mine in. Okay. Um, I should have said, incidentally, that only BCS members should vote in this poll. Um, we don't have a check. We just take that. Okay, um, the figures aren't changing, so the polling results were um, four or three abstain one. That four actually should be uh, that top number should be four, not three, uh, because because I start the poll, I can't actually vote myself. Um, so it's actually four. Four one. Okay, so then we go to the next slide, and. Um, Election of Treasurer, Richard Miller uh, is the sole candidate. Um, and I will start a poll on that and say um, this is BCS members only, so we don't need. So, are we, sorry uh, to interrupt, are we sharing something on the screen? You should see a thing saying vote A, B, or C. Did you not see that? But you didn't put it up now, right? Again? No, um, hang on. You do I'm it now, I can see your PCs. Hang on, give me a second, I haven't started it yet. Okay. Now, you should see an opportunity to vote A, B, or C. Yep. Okay. Able to see now. Yeah, good. Uh, that was just me being slow in starting the poll, sorry. The interface changed since last year, and I'm just on the way around it. A reminder, um, BCS members only to vote. Okay. Uh, that looks like it's not changing anymore. So the result is, three, well, that should be four votes for no against, no abstain, because I can't vote for myself. And next slide. Uh, election of membership secretary. Um, and we don't have a candidate for this one. Um, does anyone wish to put their name forward? You have to be a BCS member. Um, does anyone wish to stand forward as membership secretary? I can do it. Uh, well, we, we, well, probably not wise to have you. As, you're, you're going to be chair, Julian, so. Um, I think the committee they will call the reports. <laughs> no, the committee will call up someone. Okay, so that the, the answer is no candidate for membership secretary. Election of inclusion officer Cornelia Bold. We should have said Cornelia Bold. Also, sent her apologies for the meeting. I forgot to say that at the beginning. Um, a past chair of this group, very. Uh, she put herself forward to be inclusion officer again. So I will start a poll. Um, <laughs> The, um, um, and the options are for, against, or abstain. Start the poll. Uh, BCS members again only. Okay. Um, okay. So we have the result of the poll. Publish the polling results. Um, so that A should be four because I'm going to vote it for, and Y gets. So Cornelia is approved. And next. Uh, election of early careers officer. Um, I, Daniel Broomhead is nominated. Uh, Daniel, can you confirm either verbally or by chat you're happy to be nominated as early careers officer? Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. All. Right, I will now start a poll on that one. Okay. 
should say how. And I know now we now know how many letters to look for. Was there an extension for Cornelia? Sorry? Was there an extension for Cornelia? No, it was an upper against. And the results of that poll is actually five because I couldn't vote there, so that's five nil. Welcome, well done, Daniel. And lastly, we have our committee, and I realized. In preparing this, I'm also willing to put my name through for the committee. Um, um, and uh, anyone, have I missed anyone from this list who would like to be on the committee? You just got them the whole, really? Yeah, we just got uh, them before. Um, so if anyone would like to be on the committee, um, please say, um, and if you don't, if you're not sure now, we can always co-opt people onto the committee afterwards. Um, I'll just give a moment for anyone who wants to type in the chat or send a message saying yes, please. Okay, so we'll add Vishal Anand. So there are eight names going forward. Um, so we will add, add Vishal Anand and Jeremy Bennett to the six shown on board. And thank you, Vishal, for putting your name forward. This really does depend on having people willing to step forward and be part of the committee. And we will now have a poll. And what we do here is we vote for the committee as a whole. Start a poll. Publish the polling results. That's five in favour because we didn't vote ourselves. Thank you very much. Um, five zero, yeah, for that committee with the two extra names. Got the extra names? Oh, I see. Oh, okay, right. Okay, I, okay. I was doing all sorts of things, and I ended up putting out the side on toss. So we go back and we come to the accounts. Uh, Richard, are you ready to do the accounts? Um, I hope so. I've uh, sent my slides to Sarah, and she said she'd upload them. Okay, I think there'll be a brief interview while Sarah uh, does a little upload, and then she'll hand over to you. Okay, Richard, you now have a presenter. Over to you. Richard, you're muted. Right, sorry for the delay in getting the slides uploaded. Um, there is, in fact, just one slide, and it will be a bit of an anticlimax. Um, the accounts this year were very simple because of COVID-19. Everything uh, was pretty much done online, uh, which means we had no catering expenses, no speaker expenses, no travel expenses for um, committee members to go to meetings and the only actual amount spent was under publicity and materials 93 pounds for server uh, hosting for these online meetings so um, you can see the the first column is what was budgeted uh, this is in whole numbers of pounds I've, I've um, left off the pennies uh, the middle column is what we actually spent and then the right-hand column is the budget for the next year. Um, we actually asked, it's, since it's pretty difficult to predict from year to year under the present circumstances, we just asked for the same budget again, and the finance office seems to have rounded it down um, to 89% of what we asked for. I'm not sure why we didn't deserve 90, but, but there it is. Um, so we had a very simple year, 
um, let's hope we have some more interesting things to spend money on in the coming year. Are there any questions? Then we can go to the vote for acceptance of the accounts, please. Okay. Sarah, could you put my slide back up again and I'll start a poll against that. Thank you, Richard. And um, in fact, that £93 is because for the first half of the year, we use, we're using that as a web server. And then for the last few meetings, uh, Julian's employers have generously supported us on providing free BBB hosting. Um, okay, thank you, Sarah. And now, if I start a poll, again, BCS members only, please. And thank you. Uh, so that's five mil. Thank, thank you for that. All approved, Richard. And then the that brings us to the I think the final item on the agenda, if I remember to add it, which I did, I think. Yeah. Yes, which is um, the committee, um, are, and this is a suggestion from Julian, the committee are willing to take any questions you may have for us as a committee, uh, so anyone who wishes to, please ask us any questions you wish. You can ask them in the public chat, or feel free to unmute and just ask on the, um, ask, ask for the audio. I have a question. So, over the COVID, we've had quite good results with online, and more recently, we've had quite good results with kind of online and in person. Going forward, would you expect to use the travel budget for like kind of UK speakers to come to here, or, or would we look to get more international speakers to come in person? Um, does anyone on the committee want to answer that, or shall I answer it? I had a little bit trouble to understand it, actually, so maybe it's good if you answer, Jeremy. Okay, so the question was, um, as we start to open up and have hybrid meetings, um, what is our plan? Are we going to get more people to come in person from around the UK and use our travel budget to bring people here, or are we going to... Um, actually stick to having more international speakers. And I think we established a general principle that there's no point in having a meeting physically here if all the speakers are remote. Um, so I think our goal will always be have a minimum of one speaker in person in London. And then we can have other speakers from around the country and internationally, and I think that will be a good way of operating until being really settled down a bit. I think long term, I think it's a great prospect to say that our physical meetings have the ability to put in speakers around the world um, to give us our free international flavour. And it is true that over the last year, the international flavour of speakers we've been able to complete command has been a dream. You know, we've had people from the US, from across Europe, we've had speakers from India, I think, even. So we've managed to pull in this time zone is just about practicable from the west coast of California through to India. Um, the only area we can't really get people in from is the Far East and Australasia. Um, uh, so I think, I hope that we we get back a bit more to face because it is that informal chat. Remember, the whole MyStorm project grew out of a conversation in a pub three, year, three or four years ago. And I think that face-to-face -face chat, the discussion that goes on, is very valuable. So, I, you know, I think we'll have a mix. Thank you, Andy. Uh, any more questions for the committee? Okay, I declare, um, in the absence of any other business, um, I declare this AGM closed. Thank you all very much. Um, I'm not sure when I actually stand up as chair, whether it is this instant. Um, or the end of the meeting or the end of the year, but I'm, um, I will carry on chairing the meeting. I think I'm going to declare that Julian is chair from now on, um, but I'll, I'll run the meeting because I'm actually physically in London. Um, so our first speaker will be 
our new chair, Julian Kunko. So over to you, Julian, and we look forward to hearing your vision for the future. So thank you all, and also thank you for voting for me, and it's a great honor um, to continue as the chair uh, of the OSSG. And I think, by the way, Jeremy and the rest of the committee has done wonderful work over the last couple of years. Um, but we also figured there are a couple of, I would say, construction side, couple of things that we want to improve upon, and that's what this roadmap is about. So in terms of high-level commit committee goals, um, we discussed that we wanted to actually grow the active OSSG members. While we have seen in the past that it's not a problem to have 40 attendees at our meetings and to have a lot of people actually watching our YouTube videos, we actually need more commitment. Participation and actually event organization is always appreciated. So in that sense, if you, for example, have a topic that is very dear to you and you can give a talk about it, why not organize a meeting, ask one of us, one of the committee members to contribute to this effort and that way you actually contribute to the overall goal of PCS OSSG. That is really wonderful. And by the way, um, Vishal, for example, he offered that. And Vishal, you show, your, you show yourself on the video. Do you want to do that? Or was it just accidental? Okay, good. Um, yeah, so that is really great and we need more of this kind of effort. In terms of advocacy, um, we, we think it would be great to have two very high profile events. While our events in general, they are very nice, what we need is some really light towers that are attended by a huge number of people. In the past, we had very, very good and high profile speakers too, but the problem was sometimes they didn't get, for example, the license to record the talks for reasons um, that are complicated, company decisions. Yeah, and these should be hot topics and we should do more promotion about those high profile events. We also consider to contribute to an additional open source conference. We hear that we supported um, OSHAC, for example, but how about another open source conference that we could support? We want to establish international practical relationship. While there is already some relationships existing, it would be great to have really a working experience where there are some joint event organizations and stuff like this. And therefore, it, as I am from Germany, it also seems quite nice to think about a German informatics society, the Gesellschaft for Informatik. And um, I will, or we will try to push forward this kind of idea. Also, it would be nice to have at least one BCS endorsed open source document, kind of like recommendations for some of some sorts. We also grew, as you heard from Jeremy over the last years, the affiliations, and we want to do that further. For example, adding one more organization, at least over this, the next year, such as LLVM. We want to continue the monthly events, at least, and uh, support and grow the networking platform for PCS. It was quite funny actually, because when these slides have been created, kind of like a month ago, the initial slide deck, there was the idea to create an open source network king platform for PCS or deploy it, actually to bring our members better together. Because what we want to achieve, right, is, is to have this community of open source expert that not only speak about open source, but they actually see value in, in this being part of the OSSG. Yeah. And for me, for example, being a member, I have to say it already paid off because I got in my network some, some people that share interest with me. For example, Jeremy with, with his uh, compiler company and so on. We figured there are various things that are interesting for me being a professional and working in high performance computing. And similarly in, in other, with other people, I have also built some relationships. And that is really, I think what this is about. It's about this community. It's not about just giving talks, attending them and going home. It's about professional relationships with like-minded people. And for that, we need a platform. And then it turns out now the, the PCS actually decided to, um, 
on this course, which is an open source product, as a networking platform. And that's really wonderful because it follows what we need and we will, of course, help BCS to make the best out of this effort and for us, for our OSG um, community as well. Yeah, and we hope that you will also see more value, attend more of these events, and you will build professional relationships that help you in the daily basis. Okay, regarding advocacy, um, I just wanted to share some, some things, some key performance indicators um, over the years. So this is kind of the development of the web page attendees. So you see that over a month, that on a daily basis, sometimes we, we have sometimes this peak with 18, 80 visitors, page views, and but often it's also around 10. So certainly there is something that we could grow on a daily basis, but at least we have the statistics now. We have on YouTube 106 videos, 600 subscribers. And now, funnily, we have a couple of videos that have up to 3,400 viewers, which we find is quite nice. But the median of the viewers is only 40. So that means the average of our videos is um, at, watched by less than 40 people. Yep. So there is still something we can work on. And also we see that viewers often watch 10 to 20% of the videos to the end. But I think that is quite common when you look at other kind of organizations. That's the typical statistic. Yeah, so a lot of people drop off half, the, half of the video or so on if they don't get a hype. By the way, our hype, absolutely hype topics were the video of Plan 9, which was done by Richard. It, it has the 3,400 viewers. And then we had a couple of videos that have between 1,000 and 2,000 viewers, uh, like hacking topics, the onion networking topics, risk five is typically very well attended, deep learning topics are hype, and finally Pearl. Yeah, and, and that is a little bit of statistics, but certainly there is some opportunity here. We hope, like said, that we continue to record the videos, all our events, and that, you know, particularly these high profile events will of course, increase our um, kind of participants. In terms of future meetings, um, these are the next three that we lined up. On November, the open source strategy and governance. Then we have open source and video games, which is quite nice. And in January, we have the RISC-V meetup, but also about open source identity management. And these are the next couple of months. And again, if you are interested in a topic, you know, why not contribute and help organizing a topic. We, we don't let you alone. We help you to find speakers and try to get it a nice evening. Yeah, and that's what I wanted to say. And if there's any question, I think pop it into the chat because this is kind of supposed to be sort of a lightning talk. Thank you very much. Back to you, Jeremy. Uh, yes, okay, I'm sorry, I, I was fighting the technology here. Uh, thank you very much, Julian. Um, 